Greetings, uh, Dr. Farhad is here. In this uh, video, I'm going to show you how to conduct exploratory factor analysis. Why we are conducting exploratory factor analysis? Normally, we are required and we are suggested to conduct exploratory factor analysis under three circumstances. First, when we are developing the new skills we have to conduct EFA. Second is where we are taking, you know, our question items from different resources. Let's say you have the construct of satisfaction, customer satisfaction, whether it is your dependent or independent variable doesn't matter. So in order to measure customer satisfaction, let's say we have five questions and you have taken all these five questions from different resources. All right, let's we assume that. So if you are taking all these different questions from different resources, we are encouraged you know, to conduct exploratory factor analysis. Third condition is where we have a variable with multi-dimension or multi-dimensional variables like brand personality, like service quality you know, uh, variable. They have a few dimensions. So in this case also, we are encouraged, but not all scholars believing in this. But some scholars, they are encouraging us to conduct exploratory factor analysis. So let's we conduct exploratory factor analysis based on the databases which I have here. Let's assume that, because I think this is very common among students, and they are taking their questions from different resources. Let's say if you're adopting your old questions from one resources, from one article, you are not required to conduct factor analysis. All right, but let's assume that you have taken the questions from different resources, from different articles. Here is where we need to conduct exploratory factor analysis. In order to conduct exploratory factor analysis, I have to go on analyze, dimension reduction, select factor, CR1 all the way down to CR10 represent one of my variable credibility i will go to descriptive make sure you are selecting kmo continue extraction from here you select maximum likelihood i will explain later on in my upcoming videos why we have to go through maximum likelihood based on eigenvalue the eigenvalue should be greater than one rotation varimax Continue, score, nothing to do with it. Option, just see you here, click suppress small coefficients. Because if we do not, and make it 0.40, because uh, small coefficient below 0.40 is not problematic. 0.40 and above, meaning that we have some cross loading and we are recommended to remove that particular height. Okay, so let's, we do not get confused. Just what I want you to do is click on suppress and change 0.10 to 40. Continue, press OK. The tables you are required to report in your project. KMO table, which is this, total variance explained, and if you are interested, you can report factor matrix table as well. KMO, always the figure of KMO should be above 0.70. Below 0.70 is problematic, but uh, we are recommending the figure should be about 0.70. Here, in this case, the KMO is 0.92, meaning that our questions they are really well and they can explain our variable very well. Since these 10 questions from CR1 to CR10 related to one variable, one factor has been extracted, and the eigenvalue is more than 1, which is good no any problem perfectly all right and the factor matrix here you see all the factor matrix the loading one is more than 0.40 some scholars also they are saying that you know, 0.30 and above is accepted here if you look all is more than 0.40 cr1 is a little bit weak which is 0.46 but it still is acceptable but the rest if you look all they have a very good look so it was the end of my video um, regarding exploratory factor analysis. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments, please you make a comment on my YouTube channel. 
uh, I try my best to address all your questions in your inquiries. Take care and bye.